All right, a lot of you may not know what a Cadillac CT5 is. Let's level set. The CT5 is a rear or all-wheel drive compact luxury sedan in the vein of the BMW 3 Series or Mercedes-Benz C-Class. The CT5 slots between the cozier CT4 and the roomier CT6, and like most other modern Cadillacs, comes in two distinct forms, luxury, as seen in our test car, and sport. For simple distinction, remember, if there's a bunch of black slash carbon fiber trim, a spoiler, 13.6 inch Brembo front brakes, 18 way sport seats, and standard 19 inch wheels, you're looking at the CT5 Sport. Meanwhile, the CT5 Luxury and Luxury Premium models are, well, chromier. With our high level understanding cemented, let's move on to the important business of needlessly flooring it. Oh, and braking. <laughs> Much needed braking. Based on its cacophonous tone, you can probably deduce this particular CT5 is powered by a four cylinder engine, specifically a two liter turbocharged unit. In maximum acceleration scenarios, the four cylinder's output is plenty intense, but when driving like a normal commuter, it pulls with a swelling, unstable feel. And to be clear, I do not like how it sounds. more cow than engine. <laughs> At the same time, the 10-speed automatic transmission that comes on all CT5s dispatches graceful, fluid shifts when casually cruising. I'll also add that the automatic engine start-stop system is mostly inoffensive. For grander acceleratory delights, choose the optional 3-liter turbocharged V6, whose hearty torque figure means you'll have a stump-pulling backup if your Silverado's in the shop. Fun fact, the all-wheel drive CT5 has a marginally larger turning circle than the rear-wheel drive version. Actually, that's more of just a fact. Uh, Tim, do you have anything fun you'd like to add? No, sorry. No fun. Tim, I hate you so I much. I really don't have anything fun. No. Oh, I'm so no, I'm, I'm what so I, boring. I ask you for one thing. <laughs> be more fun. And this is what you give me. Sorry. Oh, where's Mike? He's funny. It's a good thing you're sexy. <laughs> When not turning in circles, the CT5 cruises stably at speed with a pleasing ride quality. Last round those corners with intensity and the chassis responds predictably. There are also a few driving modes to play with for customizing your compact caddy's behavior. Overall, the CT5 has a balanced disposition and I like it. It's neither too hot nor too cold. I like that Tim, he's too hot. Oh! <laughs> Where passenger accommodations are concerned, we find strengths and weaknesses. Material quality is fine, but all of this isn't going to keep the Germans up at night. No surprise, but I fit comfortably in the driver's perch, and there's adequate adjustability to find a pleasing driving position. And while I'm here, I'm going to rate the CT5 a satisfactory squirrel on the Mike Amusio Elbow Comfort Index. The armrests are well positioned, but the inboard padding is just a little bit too firm. And yeah, I'm sticking with that whole squirrel motif. <laughs> throw me in the back seat and hey, what's this? I, the quintessentially average five foot 10 inch American male, don't fit all that well. Unless I want to slouch and I don't want to slouch. My mom watches these videos. Keep the comments respectful people. My mom watches these videos. Yeah, so while rear seat legroom is adequate, headroom will be dicey for taller folks. For luggage hauling, there's a cozy but nicely square 11.9 cubic feet available in the trunk, with fold-down seats accommodating larger loads. Note, the seat releases are in the cabin, so you'll have to hoof it to the sides if you want to drop the rear seats. Semi-related, accessing the CT5's interior is done with door handles featuring electronic releases, so, you know, don't yank on this like it's a normal door handle. Probably won't come off in your hand, but best not to try. For interior storage, there's a modest center console hold, a reasonably sized glove box, bottle storage in the doors, a neat umbrella holster also in the doors, seat back pockets, and a handy little spot next to the driver's knee for tiny things like lip balm or a comprehensive list of Tim's friends. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. I'd also like to mention that there's a dedicated phone slot here that I like, though wrangling the cord through the bottom is a little bit awkward. If they just cut a slot right here so it could slide through, this would be easier to use. Oh, and one last thing. This bit of plastic right here is really sharp and pokey, so don't like cut yourself on it. Oh, damn it. 
Speaking of phones, there are three USB ports to charge them, though the one in back is USB-C, so dongle accordingly. More importantly, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration is included on the CT5 standard 10-inch touchscreen. The CT5's Q infotainment interface is easy to operate and simply arranged. You can either use this all-controlling knob or just touch the thing you want on the touchscreen. I'm a man who likes options. For example, is there like a better, more talented videographer who can shoot this? No. No. All right, we've abused poor Tim enough. Let's distract from his woes by noting that if everything I've described so far sounds awesome, but you simply need more speed, there is a racier CT5V. It's got a magnetic ride control suspension, an electronic limited slip rear differential, a 20 horsepower bump versus the basic CT5's V6, and a requisite restyling to make it clear you bought one of the faster Cadillacs. By the way, a properly outrageous 600-something horsepower CT5V variant also exists, depending on when you're viewing this, but it wasn't revealed by the time I wrote this sentence, so just use your imagination. If, like me, you appreciate frugality, the simplest Cadillac CT5 luxury trim is offered with an MSRP under $38,000, including destination charges. That price includes LED lights, keyless access with push-button start, heated power front seats, automatic emergency braking, this high-resolution backup camera that looks nice, and a collision warning system with flashing lights that are reflected on the windshield and a vibrating seat so you will definitely know when danger lurks. However, if you want increasingly common driver assist like adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist, you'll have to upgrade to the premium luxury trip. Quick reminder, both of those features come standard on a base Honda Civic. Other worthwhile options include leather seats, wireless phone charging, blind spot warning, a 360 degree camera system that can record your CT5 surroundings, and Cadillac Super Cruise quasi-autonomous freeway driving assistant. Which I would demonstrate if our car had it, but I hear it's quite nice. As for CT5 alternatives, there are many. Geez, that is a lot of cars, several of which have higher base prices than the CT5. Price aside, the CT5 isn't what I'd call an unbridled standout amidst such stout competition. And so, I'll recycle my closing thoughts from my Cadillac XT6 review. For some people, there's no replacing that Cadillac crest. If you want a compact Cadillac luxury sedan, that's your ride.